Hi, my name's Keith Cooper, North Light Images, and in this video I'm going to have a look at some of the aspects of paper choices, card choices, media choices for inkjet, and why they don't work sometimes. Why am I covering this again? Um, because, once again, somebody asked me, I want to print such and such card on, which is the best inkjet printer for this? Now, leaving apart all the aspects that about printing on small cards, paper feeding, the physical aspects of it. Quite often when I'm asked about this, the major problem has been ignored. The card has been specified, now which printer will work best for it? Now sometimes, and I'm going to cover uh, some of the problems here and some of the fixes potentially for it, um, sometimes with a particular card it just won't print in an ordinary inkjet printer. Um, there is no messing about with media settings and I get people who contact me and say, I've tried all the different media settings and it don't work. Well, if you tried all the media settings and it don't work, take that as a giant great hint that you've got the wrong paper, the wrong card for that particular printer and no amount of messing around and changing settings is ever going to make much of a difference. Now, simple example of it. Um, I'm going to talk about what makes papers different and why some work. But a simple example of it was um, a, a print here. This was from testing a printer years ago. Epson 3880, Stylus Pro 3880. So that's years ago. And I printed a picture on it on a matte paper, sort of you know, perfectly ordinary matte photo pa art paper of Southwold Beach. And it looked awful. And I thought, what's gone wrong here? Is something wrong with the printer? Something wrong with the setup? I've then noticed that I'd taken a sheet out of the box wrongly and I put the paper in the wrong way around. So I've got one print with printed on the rear side of the paper. And, you know, having seen this happen on some papers, I'm lucky that it dried or that it looked okay at all. And then there's a print of it on the correct side. What's the difference in the paper? So here's a paper. This is an HP, um, no, so it's a Hannah Muller watercolor 210 gram paper and it's textured paper um, it's it's paper what's special about this frink jet well the surface that's going to be printed on has potentially several different coatings on it now this could just be a plain paper well you know a, a, an art paper that has had an ink receptor layer on it what's an ink receptor it's a coating and it can be all sorts of uh, things but it's a coating which allows ink to settle and stay on the paper if you print on the wrong side and there's no ink receptor layer the ink can run the ink can wick along fibers um, i've noticed it on printing sometimes trying out canvas you can actually see tiny little marks where the ink has run now hopefully you just you're just using the wrong settings and changing the settings can work but it does mean that if you get ordinary artist canvas and try printing it in an inkjet printer you're likely to get all sorts of problems from whether it's just pale colors or the ink running or not drying properly all sorts of things so the coating that's on this paper here is designed to accept the ink there are different types of coating um, some work better with dye ink some work better with pigment inks because the two uh, interact with the surface layer differently now if you've got let's say a bright white art paper a smooth part there may well be a coating of some you know some white baryta barium sulfate or something like that on it and then there'll be another layer on it. there could be multiple layers now you won't find much information about this when you look up details on papers because the information is highly proprietary so the companies are not going to tell you what there is on that. You may sometimes find information on the material safety sheets for, for papers, but unlikely you'll find much in useful detail. So we've got a paper here that's been coated. It could be a, you know, a plastic film, it could be a pulp paper, but it will have a coating on to take ink. And that is the key. Get the wrong coating and your ink 
from your inkjet printer may run it may not even dry now there's a range of cheap photo papers that uh, i've come across and i keep some samples of them just to try in different printers and um, I, I use them sparingly because often the ink just doesn't dry properly at all you get the same problem if you're trying to print on transparent film for making digital negatives if you don't get transparent film which has a coating to actually accept the ink on it you will end up with a sheet of film where if you rub your finger across it the ink will just rub off um, now that you don't want for your digital negative but also you don't want that happening inside your printer because the ink will roll off on rollers and stick up and, and cause all sorts of problems inside your printer so you will get problems if you use the wrong paper and this is and this is where People who ask me, I want to print such and such cardstock. Now, whenever I hear the words cardstock mentioned in a request for information about a printer, I almost certainly know there's going to be problems because anything that is sold as cardstock, it's meant for commercial use. Now, you might find cardstock optimised for inkjet use, that's great. But most times you just go to a craft shop or a supplier somewhere and get some uh, some card. Now, the card may be coated. It may have a bright white reflective coating on it, so it may look a very nice surface. But that is not an inkjet receptor. If it's not an inkjet receptor, the ink will likely run, won't dry, all the problems I've mentioned for it. So if you do want to print on card, and this, this bit here, I know it's stuck in a standard. I was using this as a reflector for some uh, macro photography. But this is uh, a board. This is mount board. Um, and this is what I use for matting pictures and things. It's a lovely surface finish. You'd think, oh, that would look nice. You run this through a printer. Now, it's quite thick, so it would need to go probably a straight through print path. But if you run this through a printer, it will look like a picture. That, it will be like printing on copier paper. If you try trying to print a photo on copier paper, you'll get a good idea of what happens when something prints wrongly. This, there is no way. It's a lovely finish. But there is no way I can get a print on this because it hasn't been coated. It's important to think about to know about paper making that uh, there are a, a lot of companies selling paper. Most of those companies, you're getting a box with paper in it, a roll or sheets of paper with their branding on it. The company that is selling you that paper, and that includes Epson and Canon mostly, um, really had nothing to do with the making of that paper. They may have specified what they want, but they didn't make it. There are relatively few specialised paper coaters in the world. There are more paper mills. So the paper could come from various sources, but then it's sent off to specialist coaters. The coatings are what give consistency to papers. So it means if I buy a box of a paper that I last bought two years ago, the profiles that I've got for that paper should almost certainly, with the same printer, should almost certainly work with it. There is a consistency of it. And if you want to try experimenting, and I'll come on to some experiments and things you can do with this, but if you really want to try experimenting, not the sort of experimenting I do here where I'm testing lots of well-known papers and things like that in a printer, but actual sort of just taking sort of handmade style papers or things like that and getting stuff from there. If you want to do that, the key is consistency. And that is always the problem in trying to do stuff yourself. Now, when I've got papers here, I've got them. Uh, as I said, you don't know where they might have come from. Now, a few companies, some of the big names are, you know, if you get something, if you get a Hannemuller paper, they've made it. They, they do that. So they do the whole process. That is relatively uncommon. Certainly if you go to one of the better paper suppliers where I get paper from um, here in the UK, and you know, some I've, I've looked at in the US as well, like Red River, um, they get paper to their specifications with their branding on it. Now they may give all sorts of additional support in the way of profiles and information like that, but that paper has come from a third party. Now, just because it comes from a third party, don't think, oh, I'll hunt out the third party and find it cheaper. No, you probably won't, because what happens is the paper gets made, it gets cut up, 
into from rolls into sheets or whatever it gets boxed it gets labeled that's where you know the costs come in for that and those costs even if it's company you know, the company makes the paper they probably don't sell it in small amounts now if i want a particular paper for a particular printer and I think well I, I, I've got my specifications I know what paper I want the Northlight brand paper what do I need to do to be able to sell you Northlight brand super fine art giclée paper for fine art prints and all of that sort of stuff I need to order perhaps a thousand boxes of it now and maybe I get a bit less but I need to order boxes and boxes of the stuff and I need to supply my labeling, my branding for it. Um, yeah, you can have Northlight brand paper if you like, but it will just be somebody else's paper with my labels put on it, which are most of them. Nothing wrong with that because quite, as I say, quite often these companies provide added value services like free profiling, free custom profiling for stuff. But there is only a certain amount of people making what I would call photo papers or art papers. Um, and the key in getting that is, as I mentioned, consistency. Now, let's just say that you want to actually have a go with your own paper. You've got a particular fine art, let's say um, yeah, a canvas or something like that, that you particularly like. You want to use that canvas. Well, canvases need sizing and preparing in the same way that inkjet papers do. But let's just say you want something other that you can print on inkjet. There are things you can apply to it. Now, I've seen people experiment with all sorts of diluted PVA glue, uh, gelatin, all sorts of stuff you can get for this. Now, you may be able to get it to work once or twice, but the chances of you being able to produce half a dozen sheets that perform exactly the same way is reduced. Is that consistency? And that's why there are only a few specialist coaters, because the quality control systems in that coating um, in process are very rigorous um, and there's a lot goes into it. So I've you know, something here if you want to experiment with it, stuff called Incade. Now you be able to find this, this is not cheap by the way, but there is a, a matrix here with all the different types of things. You can put it on boards, watercolour papers, you can put it onto metal surfaces, plastic surfaces. You can put this stuff I wouldn't say on almost anything, but there are different versions of it for different different types of surfaces. But I could take some of this ink aid, I could put it on this here. You need to sort of brush it on or use a roller or something like that. And then once it's dried and various things, I've got a paper I can use an inkjet printer. Um, I can take my favorite handmade paper that I use for sketching. I can put some of this on it and then I can print in an inkjet. But if you just go and get some basic cardstock because you want to make some cards or something like that and think, why won't this work in my inkjet printer? It's all about coatings. Um, you can do it yourself or you can try and find someone, you know, some card that has been coated by somebody for you. Um, and that's the tricky bit for it. Anyway, I hope that's of some use. Uh, I hope it sort of covers a few, covers quite a few questions I've been asked about papers, cards, things like that. Uh, we won't go into sizes or anything like that or the practicalities of printing. This is just get back getting the right media. So if you've got any questions, please do ask. Uh, happy to answer them. And uh, well, thanks to the person who recently asked me about this again, and uh, thanks for watching. Oh, please do, um, I believe, like and subscribe is the appropriate bit. But of course, nobody ever gets to this end bit of the video anyway, so thanks for watching.